Hi everyone, this is Ms. Romani, and for this lesson, we will learn about calories. Honestly, I would be very surprised if you had not heard about calories at some point in your life. Many of you, for example, may have noticed that a few years ago, starting in January 1st of 2017 to be exact, many restaurants and food service chains started posting the calorie content of foods on their menus. And the reason for that was that the Healthy Menus Choices Act went into effect that year. The act states that food service chains with 20 or more locations must post the number of calories in the food and drink items that they sell. The rule does not apply to restaurants with less than 20 locations, so it's really just about restaurant chains. And the information was mandated to help the public make informed choices about the number of calories they're consuming. The idea is pretty basic. When you know what you're eating, you tend to make better food choices. But why focus on calories? And what exactly are calories? Calories is just one of those terms that people often use without seeming to fully understand what the word means. And people talk about calories as something bad that needs to be avoided, especially when trying to lose weight. But a calorie is not a bad thing or a good thing. It is actually just a unit of measurement. It is a unit of energy. And it's a unit of energy in food. Basically, we need energy every day to fuel our body functions and our physical activity. We eat and drink to get this energy, and that energy is measured in calories. Specifically though, one calorie, also called a gram calorie or a small calorie, is defined as the amount of energy it would take to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius. So this mini muffin here, for example, has 80,000 gram calories. One of these muffins, if burnt, has the energy to raise the temperature of 80,000 grams of water by one degree Celsius. Now you may be thinking, where did this 80,000 calorie muffin come from? That's a heck of a huge calorie punch for such a small muffin. And that's because we don't actually use the gram calorie as a unit of measurement, at least not in North America. Because a simpler way of denoting 80,000 calories is to say that the muffin has 80 kilocalories. So a large calorie or a kilogram calorie would tell you the energy needed to raise one kilogram of water by one degree Celsius. This unit uses the symbol CAL, but it uses a capital C instead of a lowercase c, uh, like it's used for the small calorie or the gram calorie. So when we talk about the energy in food, we use the word calorie, but we're referring to the kilogram calories. No food packaging, at least not in Canada or the U.S., uses the small calorie to measure the energy content of food. Although I have seen some nutrition labels from countries outside North America that will actually include the small calorie and will have the information as kilocalories. But... In North America, we just simply shortcut it to using the large calorie, and we use a capital C uh, in the unit of measurement. So calories measure the energy in food. So then, what is energy then? And I know that most of us have an idea of what energy is, but how can we define it? And in science, we define energy as the ability to do work. For our bodies, work refers to movement, or to our heart muscles contracting, or our diaphragm contracting so we can breathe, or our neurons firing when we think, or all the chemical reactions that are happening in our bodies just to keep us alive. And that's just to name a few. And so that energy to do all those things that keep us alive comes from the food that we eat. And it is important that we have a way to measure the energy content of food so we can put that information in food labels and in menus, and so that people can be informed about how much energy there is in the food that they consume. And originally, the calorie content of food was measured using a machine called a calorimeter, or calorimeter. Since a calorie is a measure of energy based on the ability to heat water, a known amount of food was placed in a container surrounded by a known amount of water, and everything was perfectly insulated. So the container was sealed, and oxygen was piped in, and the food was ignited, so they set the food on fire. And then the food would then raise the temperature of the water, and a thermometer 
would measure that raisin temperature, and then the calorie content of the food could be calculated by just figuring out how much energy the food burnt was able to add to the water to raise the temperature of the water. Now, there were problems, however, with this sort of calorie determination. For example, food can contain fiber, and fiber will burn, but is not absorbed into our bloodstream and is therefore not contributing to the calories that we get from that food. So food with fiber would raise the temperature of water in such a device, but that energy is not energy that is available to us. So today, the calories in food are actually calculated by adding up the calories provided by the energy-containing nutrients in the foods, the carbohydrates, the proteins, and the fats. Carbohydrates and proteins provide four calories of energy per gram of food. Fats, on the other hand, provide the most calories of energy, providing nine calories per gram of food. Sometimes this is called as the 4-4-9 rule. Now, because carbohydrates include fiber that is not digested and it is not used by our bodies for energy, the fiber component is usually subtracted from the total carbohydrates before the calculations are made for this type of calculation. And other than water or zero calorie drinks, everything we consume has energy and therefore a calorie count. But because different foods are made up of different amounts of uh, in the different types of carbohydrates, proteins, and fats, their calorie count can be vastly different. Even if you compare an equal amount of food, say like in this example, and we were comparing 100 grams of different types of foods. So some foods, like fruits and vegetables, have lots of fiber, and therefore will have less calories than, say, Skittles, which are basically just simple sugars. On the other hand, say oats, which have fiber and also starches, will have less calories than granola. And that's because granola is just basically cooked oats with lots of fat and sugar. So the extra simple sugars and the extra fat will significantly add more calories to granola as opposed to just having oats. So knowing how much energy there is in food can help us manage our weight. If we consistently put more energy into our bodies than we burn, the excess will gradually be stored as fat and we gain weight. If we burn more energy than we take in, we lose weight. But for this balance to work, we need to have some idea of how much energy we actually burn. So on average, adults and youth ages 13 and older need about 2,000 calories a day. And children ages 4 to 12 need about 1,500 calories a day. It is important to remember, though, that your individual needs may vary. Notice, for example, how boys and men have a higher caloric need than girls and women. And that the more active you are, the higher your caloric need as well. So many people use online calorie calculators or say charts like this one to estimate their energy needs and to figure out how many calories they need to consume each day. And they can, you know, take into account, you know, their activity level as well as their age. But the number of calories a person needs to consume each day to maintain their weight, basically the number of calories a person will burn each day, is based on a few more things than just your age and your activity level. So this number is based on something called the total energy expenditure. The total energy expenditure, or TEE, is a calculated number of the calories a person would burn in a day. And this amount is based on three values. The most, which is 70%, corresponds to what is called a resting metabolic rate. Sometimes it's also called the basal metabolic rate, so you might have heard it by that term. Now, these are the calories needed for survival, like basic survival. If you're doing nothing during that time, you're not even eating, not moving around, these are the calories you burn just for existing. And this amount differs for a variety of factors, like for example, age. Uh, as we age, we need less calories. Elderly people have way slower metabolic rates and burn a lot less energy just surviving than, say, a teenager. Your genes or your hormones could, could also have an effect. 
there are people who seem to have a difficult time putting on weight and those who have the opposite problem. And genetics and hormone levels may play a role in this. Uh, also, your body composition and your weight can determine your, your resting metabolic rate. The more muscle you have, the more energy you burn just by existing. And also, the heavier you are, the more energy you burn. 10% of the energy we burn every day is just for digestion. And this is called the thermic effect of food, TEF. It takes energy to digest food, and we need to take this into account. And finally, on average, 20% of our energy burned is based on the amount of energy that you expend during physical activity, like walking or exercising or even talking or writing a note during class. These are all physical activities that burn energy throughout the day. Of course, they don't all burn the same amount of energy. So, for example, taking the stairs instead of an elevator could be a way of increasing the amount of energy you burn. So ultimately, this final value is the one that we have the most immediate control over. You can decide to get off the couch and go for an hour walk to burn an extra 300 calories today but you can't easily control your resting metabolic rate. So the idea behind the total energy, energy expenditure is that in order to maintain a healthy weight, we should aim to take in as many calories in the food that we eat as we burn. Eating less calories than our TEE will result in weight loss and taking in more calories will result in weight gain. This idea of calories in and calories out is known as CICO. It's a style of dieting that is gaining popularity. Many people use this method to control their body weight or to even lose weight. They count the calories in the food they consume every day and they try to stay within the value that I would allow them to maintain the healthy body weight they want or most often the amount of calories that they feel will allow them to lose weight. And the idea can be appealing for some people. It kind of breaks down eating into a simple math equation. And honestly, it does not involve eliminating any foods as long as you stay within your calorie limit. You can eat whatever you want. You can eat a piece of cake as long as you eat just the right number of calories so that you don't go over that maximum amount you've allowed yourself for the day. So then that begs the question, are all calories the same? Can we break down nutrition to simple math? Is food just about calories? Will consuming 100 calories in an apple be the exact same as consuming 100 calories in a can of pop? And I really hope that by now we have learned enough from this unit that you will realize that no, food is not just about calories. And even though in terms of energy, a calorie is a calorie, Nutrition is not just about getting energy from food. We also need to get the proper nutrients, especially fiber and the essential vitamins and minerals we need to be healthy. Not only that, but different foods affect our bodies in different ways. For example, foods that are high in fiber, like fruits and vegetables, like this apple, can slow down the absorption of simple sugars and help regulate insulin levels. The calories found in whole foods will always be better than the calories found in processed foods because those calories bring along the nutrients we need to stay healthy and to feel good. Processed foods are also loaded with sodium, simple sugars, saturated fats, and maybe even trans fats. And they also can have chemical additives and preservatives that can be detrimental to our health. Processed foods also tend to have way more calories per amount of food than whole foods. Eating foods with too many calories and too few nutrients could not just leave us overweight, but also malnourished and feeling sick and without energy. You can also eat a lot more if you eat healthy foods. The high calorie count in most processed and fast foods make it too easy to consume more than our daily recommended number of calories. Whole foods, especially those high in fiber, have less calories and make you feel full longer, which makes it much harder to overeat. So are all calories the same? The answer is clearly no, they are not. And that's it for today's lesson. I hope that you learned that it is important to consume the right number of food calories every day. Not too little, but not too much. 
and that even though we can break down food to the number of calories they provide, food is more than just energy. Food also has nutrients that we need to stay healthy and to feel well. So I hope that I've inspired you to replace processed foods with more whole foods into your diet. Talk to you later.